Hello and welcome to the New Moon Tarot reading for October. I am speaking just over half an hour after the new moon was exact, which was at 12.05pm UK time, and it is a new moon in Libra, for those of you who don't know. I'm going to put timestamps in. Those of you who know the introduction that I give um, can skip straight forward to the first card. But in the meantime, for those of you who are new to the reading, welcome. It's good to have you here and on board with us. And um, the way that I do a reading is it's nearly always a three card reading. Sometimes there is a fourth card that comes along, which is uh, made apparent or it's apparent that I need to draw a fourth card sometime along in the reading. And then that's a qualifying card for normally a specific card, but otherwise three cards. The first card is the foundation. And that is what we are coming into the reading with, something that has already happened or is in the process of happening, but whose influence is kind of waning because it is making way for then card number two, which is the current weather, the theme card for the next four weeks and beyond. And um, and how those two cards interact really is the alchemical process that defines a particular experience in your life, whether that experience is one that takes up a lot of space or one that's more subtle and going on in the background or a particular corner of your life. But in some way or another, it will be significant. And sometimes the really big ones, even though they're significant um, in an immediate way, aren't always as significant as the small moments that then pan out into something that really has a very large impact in one's life. Um, but those are really the, the kinds of impacts that we only see after the fact. So if you can't identify something that is going on in this next four weeks that, that feels like the reading is describing, then I would remain um, open-minded about what that might be, uh, not necessarily having to go and, and root it out or search for or hunt for it, but rather just to remain curious about how that might show up for you after the fact. And then finally, card number three is the agency or tool card. And this is the card where you are, um, you're given a hint or a reflection of how it is that you specifically can interact meaningfully with the other two cards because of course you can't have a direct impact on the first card the foundation card because it's already happened um, and then the theme card is normally something that that you have no direct impact on or that in some way you you cannot control in in any wholehearted, meaningful, specific way. In other words, it might be a collective experience. It might be something that has happened as a result of things that have gone before. But the tool and agency, tool agency card is, is the one where you are able to use it as either a lever or a microscope or a pen, you know, however you use it um, in a way that then feels personally meaningful to you, in a way where you can interact with the other two cards um, in a way that, that makes sense to you and so that you can make sense of the other two cards. So that is how I do the reading. And this is the first of the three cards and this is the foundation card. So remember, this is in the process of happening or has already happened, but is in some way forming the foundation for the current weather theme, which is card number two. But this is card number one, and that is the Knight of Cups. Okay, so now I have to talk about what went on in last month's reading. So if you haven't um, listened to last month's reading, then this, this particular card might make more sense once you've done that. But, but whether you do or not, this, this reading will stand alone. Um, in terms of interpretation. And the Knight of Cups is a card that I referred to in last, in last time's reading because in the tool or agency position of last month's reading, it was the Prince of Cups. And I mentioned the Knight of Cups as, um, or if I didn't mention it, um, I, I definitely was thinking in my mind that the Prince of Cups is the Knight of Cups, you know, in a more, not immature form, but, uh, but a more idealistic form of the card, or one that needs anchoring into some sense of maturity. 
And now we have the Knight of Cups in this reading. So for me, that suggests that that very, very, um, that very charged feeling or a charged situation, whether it came up inside you or came to you from somebody else or from an interaction with somebody or something else around eros about the around the emergence of some sense of connecting to one's libido not necessarily sexually though though sexually would or essentially or erotically would would very much be part of the process but really firing up an aspect of you that um is really about falling in love with something, whether that's falling in love with a person or with a part of yourself or with an aspect of your life or something new or someone new that comes in. It's that um, very highly charged sense of imbuing the other or this other thing with a, with a, a quality of um, eros or promise or aliveness um, and, and, that was something that really was being asked in terms of the agency card to engage with the process that was going on in, in last month's reading. But then the Knight of Cups is the mature version of the Prince of Cups here because the Knight in the Rorig Tarot is the, um, is the king in many of the other decks. And the Knight of Cups is where the Prince of Cups has done, so the Knight of Cups has been there and done that. He has gone out and fallen in love probably many times and has come back to his throne, come back to the court with a sense of um, not only memories of this and an experience of it, but the wisdom that comes from that as well. So um, it is about then a more mature um, and by that, I don't mean that the prince is immature or it's a, it's, um, it's a thing to be avoided that the, prince, that the prince goes through, but rather it's part of the process of maturing and being able to work with one's eros in a different kind of way. And this is the foundation. So to me, it suggests that in some way in the recent past, the Prince of Cups has shifted form into something else that is perhaps more considered or less, um, what would be the word? Not desperate, but less charged, um, less a sense of, um, and I don't necessarily mean this sexually, but, but less a sense of meeting something and wanting to rip its clothes off immediately. You know, um, it is rather more, um, not sedate, but it is it, it is more diffuse. It is not so directed like, I want you and I want you now, or I want that and I want that now, and I can feel it in my body. But rather, I want to know you. I want to know what it feels like to know you. Um, I want to understand what's important to me in that coming to know you and to know myself through you. So it is, a, it is more considered in that way. And if I look at the Knight of Cups, there's writing down the side, and it is the ability to give, devotion to a loved person, to reach higher emotional levels, spiritual relations, family of one's choice. So um, unlike many of the other Rory cards, the Knight of Cups really does give up a lot of meaning with the writing that goes on there. And I'm going to read them again because I think that they're really important in this foundational card. Ability to give, devotion to a loved person, to reach higher emotional levels, spiritual relations, family of one's choice. So in other words, there is something here about nurturing and valuing, and nurturing as if you value, the relationships with those who come into your life who are not necessarily um, blood-related, but who feel in some way deeply familiar and as if they are blood related. And that's going to bring up all kinds of shit along with it. So it's not as it's not just the falling in love phase, because of course the Prince of Cups talks about the falling in love, but then it doesn't really talk about what needs to be contended with afterwards, which is the reality of the whole person who you were looking at, or the reality of the whole situation. You know, it's nothing is um, solid gold all the way through. 
And actually, if you think of the idea of Midas it, um, and the myth of Midas, you wouldn't want it to be solid gold all the way through because then it lacks life. You know, what, what looked precious is actually lifeless at its very heart. So so this, this, um, this sort of sense of eros then gives way to a sense of, can I love all of you? Am I appreciating all of you? Are there parts of you that are that, that don't feel as lovable to me and that aren't really so easily able to be appreciated? Um, but am I able to at least accept them as something that I can see right now that I will not ignore? And of course, this is in the recent past where it's foundational. So in some way, um, many of you will relate to this in a way as go, oh, yes, that's what I've just been through, or that's how something has panned out. For those of you who have not, I would still maintain what I said, a sense of curiosity around where that may be happening. And it may be happening within you, um, and it may be happening around you, and it may not be happening, and this is for everyone, or it may not have happened in connection with another person but rather in connection with um, a pursuit, with a passion, with a new project, uh, with anything, really, anything that has the ability to um, both totally turn you on and also uh, um, utterly frustrate you in that being turned on and never fully being able to, to um, realise that promise because behind that promise of gold is is actually um, a whole lot of other things that aren't gold as well, but but which form this holism or this this holistic experience, which is really what love is about. Is um, that mature kind of love in the Knight of Cups is not just about, as I said in last in last uh, month's reading, tits and ass. You know, it's not just about that. It's not, and I mean that. You know, it could be physical, but it could be metaphorical. But it is, as the Knight of Cups has very clearly written, the ability to give devotion to someone or a loved thing, you know, and, and as a result of that, to be able to reach higher emotional levels, which is spiritual relations. And that is um, and that is really carving the family of one's choice, just to weave a sort of small narrative out of out of the writing in that. But the Knight of Cups is looking off to the left of the reading, and the reading is very much um, a sort of, in a way, because it's foundational, um, it's, it's, um, he's looking off to the past. So something has happened in your recent past that is foundational to what we are going to see in card number two, that really is about a sense of maturity around what love actually means. And it is a maturity that, that may have actually happened apparently quite rapidly, even though you may have been preparing for this, you know, for months or even years or decades. But the, the Prince of Cups has in some way given way to the Knight of Cups. Um, and, and that is what you are bringing in now, is the contending with a more mature, a more mature viewpoint of what love means. Um, to you and possibly to others around you. So that is foundational and the Knight of Cups is going to be interacting with the current theme card which is the Ten of Discs. Ten of Discs came up quite a long time ago, several months ago, um, in I think two different positions. But, um, but that may or may not be relevant. So you may want to go and search for the Ten of Discs in previous readings. But of course, Ten of Discs is going to come up um, many times and in, for different reasons. So it may not be connected to how the Ten of Discs was playing out for um, you over the time period that it appeared last. I will go and see if I can have a look for the Ten of Discs and, and make a note of where, it, of where it was or where other readings, just in case there is a connection. So the current theme is the Ten of Discs, and the theme really is that idea of cashing in. That sounds like such a such a sort of frivolous or um, or mercenary um, phrase, cashing in. And you know what? It could be, but but it may not be because the Ten of Discs is really about wealth on all levels, because discs are the final suit in the deck. They encompass all of the other suits in a very, very um, material way because discs are about matter. 
So I will I will often say that the discs are um, everything that we that we experience with our five senses. Um, and and so that is the world around us. It's our bodies, ourselves, everything, money, relationships, people. Um, it's so it but it can do with money and very often will do with material possessions. But it will also do with uh, could do with sort of material possessions in the loosest sense of the word in terms of the relationships that you have so so the um the assets that you have you know if relationships are our assets there could be deficits as well who knows and and in fact you know look at look at how how relationships are you know um, whether they are assets or whether they are something else because in in the context of spiritual relations and family of one's choice well, of course, the, the word choice really is there about about whether or not you want to have the kind of um, connections that you are having. And if you don't, whether you actually want them to continue. So there is something about choice here. And, um, and then the Ten of Discs being the end of the line of a particular way that a relationship is going or a particular... Um, the way that a well anything again that you interact with your five senses so it could be a project it could be a relationship it could be a property it could be an investment it could be um gosh a, a, a partnership of some kind but it's the end of the line in as much as it's yielded as much as it can yield in its current form it doesn't mean that it has to end but it will change form um, so there may be some endings, but there may simply also be a changing of form. So at its most simple, for example, you've gone and put money in a savings account. You've realized that the interest rates as they are, are not going to yield anything more than you're already going to get. It's, it's, um, it, you're actually in a way losing money because you could be investing elsewhere. You cash that savings account in and you make and you invest your money in something else that is going to bring a higher return. So in that way, as you can see, that is um, very much a, a, a very simple, very practical, pragmatic experience of explaining how the 10 of discs is not necessarily about ending it as much as changing form, because of course it is always about changing form. Things never really end, they do just change form. But in its current form, it has gone as far as it's it's going to get. And in fact, holding on to this particular thing in your in your physical, material, embodied world is going to um, yield nothing but discomfort or a sense of sluggishness. So the ten of the ten of discs almost is asking or begging for itself to be transformed. Um, that that there is there is a sense of enoughness about it, or perhaps even going into too muchness about it. Um, there is a wealth of something to be gained from what it is in its current form, but you can only really truly gain from it once in some way you have acknowledged that it needs to shift. Um, and then by shifting, you are cashing in, whether that is a physical cashing in or getting shares from a company or the sale of a company or having somebody buy you out, or whether it is about acknowledging what a relationship has been in the past, the value of that, but understanding that part of the value has been realizing that in some way it needs to change. So, um, and the Knight of Cups is very clearly, I think, sort of signaling back to saying what is important to you you know do you you know do you now are you able to give yourself the ability to give are you able to free yourself up to devote yourself to a loved person are you able now to be able to shift things so that you can reach higher emotional levels so that your relationships are more spiritually meaningful to you and i don't necessarily mean spiritual in the in the um, in the sort of very specific narrow sense of the word, but rather more that it um, that it feeds your soul, that they are soulful, um, that it makes you feel good and you make others feel good, that in some way it um, builds you up rather than is detrimental, and and then you know and then that idea of family of one's choice. 
all of those things that the Knight of Cup know, knows, the Knight of Cups knows, and he brings in from his, his experience of being a sort of young idealistic person in love. And remember, the Knight of Cups, it doesn't matter what sex you are, it, it, the Knight of Cups is a quality that lies in all of us to a greater or lesser extent. But what he brings and how that is going to inform the decisions that you make over the next four months that will then affect, well, the rest of your life about what is important, what has fed you, what has fed you as much as it can, how it needs to change, whether it needs to end, where you can put your energy next. Because implied in the um, the Ten of Discs is if you, I always look at the next card in the tarot deck, and it's not going into the major arcana, I don't see that, I see the sort of minors as a cycle, cycle, cycle. Um, then the, the next card is the Ace of Wands. So really it is starting again, but, but of course it's that pure potential energy. And that is, that is there as a result of the Ten of Discs that there is something um, either that's been brought alive or freed up or created in order to then to then um, put that into something else or to take it to the next level. In other words, it can't change. Uh, it can't stay the same. It's um, or maybe actually I go with the idea of it can't change. And if it can't change, then it will have to change, if you see what I mean. But so taking it to the le next level so when I talked about changing form, for example, it's not necessarily changing it entirely. Um, it could be, for example, a long-term relationship um, that uh, that then, or a long-term engagement that then mean you know it results in marriage. It's like, okay, we've we've taken it as far as as this level, but but now actually we want to commit further. That that kind of thing. Or um, this marriage has gone as far as it can do. And, and actually, um, it's, you know, we, we have got as much out of this as we can, or I have got as much from this as I, as I needed to, you know, whether that was positive or negative, and it is time for me to move on and choose something else. So as, as you can see, it can be, it can be moving towards something or moving away from something and towards something else moving closer towards something or deciding to change form because it no longer fits. So really it is about your understanding the ten of discs in your own particular circumstances and looking for that sense of fullness that, um, that and it may be very obvious, it may be I have had it up to here with this. You see there, that's the idea of fullness, okay, but that's a that's quite an extreme example. Um, but but another one is um, the idea of, oh look, you know my um, my two thousand pound savings account. I've now reached two thousand pounds, so I am going to have to change form. You know, it's going to have to go on to something else. It's it can be as as well, minor. Two thousand pounds isn't minor, but what I mean is it's it can be as mundane as that, rather than this. Um, massive spiritual awakening it could be it could be incredibly practical because of course we are talking about the ten of discs here it, it encompasses everything you know from the sublime to the ridiculous to the mundane so um so that's what you've got there you've got the knight of cups in some way acknowledging this maturation process towards the refining of values and then as a result of that um then leading into this acknowledging that something needs to shift in the material world in order to accommodate that shift within the knight who has now matured in some way. And then the tool card, so the agency card where you can, I mean, there's a hell of a lot of agency in this already, but let's see what the, the tool card brings in, in terms of your being able to act meaningfully. And perhaps in this, in this case, then the tool card is actually a focal point it's about focusing this reading into something specific. And that is the lover's card. Now, the lover's, I don't think the lover's has come up for a while. But um, but the lover's is, is really, I mean, the lover's on the one archetypal level really is about lover's. It is about... Um, about that archetypal sense of um, coming together. 
in a in let me take a step back the major arcana are are archetypes in as much as whereas the minors describe day-to-day situations or very familiar kinds of interactions um, either within or with with the world and that the court cards describe personality traits or the ways that one mature, matures from an internal perspective um, how how one um, the various personae that one adopts and also the the truths of of who one is at, at heart that reveal themselves through through the um, court cards. So in other words, there may be an aspect of your personality that you're unaware of that then suddenly the emergence of a court card that seems unfamiliar to you mirrors back something in you that you haven't seen before. So you've got those. The major arcana are really about soul shifts. They are about um, being able to, in some way, advance yourself along your own path of becoming. So they are much more to do with the inner journey, but they may well manifest in outer experiences. But um, but the experiences are rather more um, rather more archetypal, and so the lovers here they are. It is about that idea of finding the other or finding the mirror. Um, but and it can be romantic, and I would say in the Knight of Cups case then maybe the the potential for that is something that is is more romantic in the traditional sense or the you know the the kind of conventional sense of the word but i would not limit it to that um because the knight of cups is also about family of one's choice and spiritual relations it may not be in the form that you would necessarily have um earmarked on your wish list for what a romantic relationship may look like. It may ask you to define what romance is to you or what you think the idea of lovers is to you. And I can't get any more specific than that, really, because it's it's what it is to you. And 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 so obviously it's going to be entirely personal. And I think that's part of the journey of your discovering of yourself and your own soul journey that is that is wrapped up in the lovers here. But the lovers can be about lovers because it is about meeting in the mirror of someone else, yourself and your soul. But it is often with someone else. And and the lovers then also talks about this idea of choice. So when the lovers is presented and particularly in some of the um, so the Marseille, the Marseille um, version of the lovers is this cupid like figure and there are three people and there is um, I think it's one man and two women and and there is this choice that needs to be made it's this sort of archetypal love triangle that is often it's often sort of activated when somebody comes into your life because um, very often there will be another person involved and it may not be involved in as much as there is another relationship going on but it may be that there was uh, another person in your mind that you were more that you more had your sort of inner sight set in. So that ideal, you know, so you have this ideal that you've been out looking for, and um, and then this person comes and you go, but they don't actually fit what I was thought I was after. So I'm not sure if this is going to work. So that is one form of choice. It could be it could be a love triangle where somebody is attached, and therefore there have to be difficult choices made by maybe all three parties, or it may be um, a choice between two suitors who are both after you, or it may be um, a choice between different things that are asking for you for your heart-based real estate, you know, where it is that you want to place your priorities in terms of what moves you and what, um, what you love and, um, and again, I would go back to the Knight of Cups idea of what that is, you know, what is a spiritual relationship? What is a family of one's choice? So I wouldn't restrict it to the romantic, though the romantic will be there for a lot of you. But but there will be a choice involved. And as I said, the choice may be an external one or it may be an internal one. Whatever is coming may challenge you to rethink what it is that's important to you and your priorities. Um, It may be that it asks you to look at aspects of yourself that you weren't aware of 
or that are activated by the presence of this person or this choice that is there. Um, and, and to ask yourself whether or not who you thought you were is actually who you are now um, or who you thought you were is the extent of who you are. So in other words, it's not that you necessarily need to change, but rather that it's about um, about accepting another aspect. And again, that's that idea of the Ten of Discs. It's not necessarily about changing, but it is about accepting that things need to shift in some way and move on. So I'm going to have a look at the lovers and see if there is anything written here. Oh, thanks, Carl. Your writing is not particularly great on this one. So I cannot see the first, um, I can't see the first word, but then it's love, attraction, approach, connection, uniting of differences, awareness through interactions. So it's very much to do with what I was talking about. It is the uniting of differences, because I think that there is, um, it's important to emphasize the idea of the lovers being the mirror. Um, there is a version of this card in the Mayan tarot deck, it used to be called the Shultun tarot deck, where it is two people standing facing each other, but actually what they're doing is they're looking at a mirror that they're holding between them. And, and that is really the idea of um, looking at, so falling in love from a Jungian perspective and from a psychoanalytical perspective, which many of you may be familiar with, but, but some of you may not be, so I think it's worth talking about. The idea of falling in love from the perspective that I take, which is very much a sort of psycho, psychological Jungian perspective, is the falling in love with aspects of yourself through someone else. Now, I've referred to this earlier on in the reading, but I think that we need to go into more detail here because, because it, is, it is the agency card. It is really about this is, this is the knowledge that you have and you can hold this, this month. So that very, very highly charged um, moment of falling in love, um, and I'm sure that many, if not most of you, have experienced this. Some of you may not have experienced it with someone, but you may have experienced it in terms of a passion or something that has totally taken over your life, and almost an obsession, because in a way, falling in love is a kind of obsession, because um, that person is imbued with some kind of magical, numinous, in other words, spiritually charged quality that you cannot get enough of. And if that feeling is mutual, then there are absolute fireworks, you know, and, um, and very often at the, you know, the beginning stages of a relationship it, like this, it is highly sexual, you spend half the day in bed, and, um, and, you know, you can't get enough of each other. But, but part of that is that you are trying through merging with that person to merge with what it is that they are showing you about yourself that you hadn't seen before and that you have fallen in love with or you are falling in love with, but you, but you are falling in love with it through them, which is a very, it's not a, I know this is not a romantic way of, of looking at it. It absolutely isn't. It, it, I remember when I first read this in James Hollis's book, The Eden Project, um, it, it, was a, it was just such a party pooper when it came to the idea of falling in love. Um, it was absolutely the medicine that I needed, but I really didn't want to read it. And I was quite pissed off with James for a while. But it is. So you are wanting to merge with that person all the time because you are wanting what they have. But actually what they have is already in you. And, and so what this, what's typically termed the honeymoon period does inevitably, inevitably, and for most people, not all people, because I do think that there are some people where they are called sort of swans. They kind of mate for life, and they are they just are able in some way to maintain this this level of devotion and and this uh, you know this level of intensity quite quite high levels for most of their life. But for most people, after the honeymoon period, you know, which is if you're lucky, about 18 months to three years, then that wears off. And then you start to contend with the real person underneath. And very often, and I'm not talking about abusive relationships, I'm talking about relationships that, that sort of, you know, that are, that are fairly good and run, you know, and run a particular course, you will 
see that person differently. And very often people you know, will go to their friends or say, oh, gosh, they've, you know, he's changed or she's changed. Well, actually, that's not the case. It's what happened is that that level of projection of that aspect of yourself that you were so in love with onto that person, it can no longer stick. It doesn't stay because that person has become, you know, very human. You know, they, they leave their underpants on the floor and, you know, they don't pick up their bath towel and they, um, you know, they leave makeup all over the, the bathroom counter or or something like that, particularly when one lives together, you know, that, that, that um, where your space is very much shared. It's difficult to have those very lustful notions stick on that person all the time when you are f- when you are faced with the full reality of them. But that is what is about, you know, loving the whole person. This is what the Knight of Cups is about. This is about what you have already equipped with is this ability to reach higher emotional levels. So higher emotional levels is not about falling in love even more with even more intensity, but rather to understand that nobody is a nugget of gold all the way through. Um, And neither would you want them to be actually if you thought about it, because again, it's that whole Midas effect. They, They aren't real anymore. So that that gold sheen kind of loses its shininess because you start to see that underneath the gold, um, there isn't so much gold. It's it's a it's a little bit more base. And and quite frankly, there'll be a bit of shit in there as well. So, you know, and that is about dealing with the whole person. But at the same time that you're dealing with the whole person, you're also dealing with you as being a whole person. And that other person is also dealing with you not being this nugget of gold that they thought. And um, and so that is the process of then falling in love and then being able to accommodate what didn't actually fall into that spectrum of loveness or lust um, as that person more fully emerges in your life. And the lovers is the beginning of that journey. It is the it is the falling in love bit. You know, the lovers is relatively early on in the tarot deck. It is card number six. There is a whole lot of other cards going on there. I mean, and the devil being the opposite, really, of the lovers is card number 15. That's quite far down the line. Um, and so so the lovers is the is the really beautiful part of it. But the Knight of Cups knows that that isn't the end of the story, that fairy tales Fairy tales end mostly with, and they lived happily ever after, and that that ends at number six um, in the in the tarot deck. They um, they don't go on to deal with you know the hermit in a relationship, and then the wheel of fortune, and then justice, you know, and then the hanged man, and then death, and then temperance, and then the devil, and then the tower, and then you know, and then the star. The star is the reconnecting of flow once you've contended with this other person in their entirety, which is about you contending with you, shadow and all. And, um, but, but here, it is about embarking on the start of a journey with something. But you also have as the foundation, the Knight of Cups, who is experienced enough to know what the full journey entails. And so there is perhaps the idea of embarking on that journey while also being equipped with the ability to know what happens. Because falling in love, you know, I mean, I would hate to get so cynic, cynical that that falling in love isn't part of the journey, whether it is falling in love with someone else or with life itself or an aspect of life, that that is part of it. And and it it is a wonderful part of it. Um, I think the problem happens when it becomes the only part of it. And so then people end up sort of going from relationship to relationship. They're sort of trapped in the lover archetype because they, they want to keep experiencing those those high feelings um, and never wanting to actually experience the, the entirety of themselves um, and the other person. But but for those who, who are able to, and this reading certainly indicates that there is the ability to do this, the lovers is a wonderful opportunity. It is an invitation into a new experience. Um, and the lovers is something that you can um, use as a focus point for this 10 of discs as being this shifting from one state to another. 
from the cashing in of something, from the acknowledgement that a particular stage has been reached and there is no point in, in continuing where you are at, and rather shifting it into something else, something new, making it change form, transforming it, transforming yourself, seeing the other person transform, transform the nature of the relationship with you that you have with that other person, with that thing, with that project, with that venture. You know, it's, again not always going to be limited to a person. But it is about bringing that idea of the archetype of the lovers into your material experience of this being full up, of the end of the line for a particular way of being, and then of that transformation. And the lovers is that tool for transformation, even if it is simply about seeing the situation through its eyes. And then also through the eyes of the Knight of Cups. I mean, you know, I would much rather negotiate wealth as an experience through a lover's lens as the Knight of Cups than I would the Prince of Cups. The Prince of Cups is the, is the person, if you know, can be the eternal Prince of Cups. Uh, there is a, you know, a 70 year old man or a 70 year old woman can be trapped in the Prince of Cups archetype. But actually, um, the call is towards the Knight of Cups. But the Knight of Cups is foundational here. So I think that, you know, the Knight is present and available to those of you who wish in some way to make use of an opportunity that is coming that will mirror something back to you that uh, is really about not only your own growth process, but the growth process of someone or some things or a project around you and how it is that you that you interact with each other in a way that allows you to become more of who you are. So really, I think it is about tempering the, the maturity of the Knight of Cups with this excitement that comes with the lovers, but also understanding that there will be choices that will be need to be made about things. So the lovers is about this choice. And sometimes those choices aren't easy. And I would say, actually, the more important something is the more significant it is to you sometimes the more difficult the choices are or that the choice is really simple to make but the consequences are difficult to handle and um, and that that is also a sign of maturity it is that ability to understand that sometimes simple choices have difficult consequences but those difficult consequences shouldn't necessarily stop you from making those simple choices if that is something that feels to be right. And it will you are the only person who is the arbiter of what's right and wrong here. Um, you you know you may do something that that feels wrong to to other people um, in terms of the choices that you make. Um, and and you know what? then you face the consequences of that as the Knight of Cups. You know, it, it is about dealing with the consequences of that. But actually, the Knight of Cups really is, his heart's in the right place. And so, therefore, there is a certain level of trust about being able to be guided by the heart in a way that is meaningful to you and to others around you, significant others, or even in the wider community. And in that way, then the 10 of discs can be transformed uh, back or it can be it can be um, it can yield its true value. It's true value, which is which is going to be yielded in the next month or so. It is, you know, this is about recognizing value and um, and appreciating it and being able to use it rather than letting it sit there thinking it's going to get better or thinking it's going to change by itself. This is about enacting that change yourself or accepting the change that comes with something needing to transform. I hope that makes sense. And if you have any questions or comments, please do get in touch with me. I would love to hear from you. I always do. It's always wonderful to hear the, the feedback, no matter what kind of feedback it is. But in the meantime, I will leave you with these three uh, really quite wonderful cards in terms of the, the richness of what it is that they seem to be emanating. And I will speak to you next month 
In the meantime, take good care of yourself. Goodbye. Thank you.